Hello YouTube, this is Steve from Firebox Outdoors. Uh, I'm going to try to cook a whole chicken inside of a 16 centimeter zebra loop handle pot. I have no idea if it'll work or not. Let's give it a try. I really like this thing. It's got these two rods that have a clip that hold them inside. And then you just open it up. I can see I should have scrubbed this uh, from the last camping trip I went on. But uh, you run these aluminum rods through and they go through pretty easily. And then once you get the aluminum rods through, you can see this one's coming through this other side. Then you go ahead and just unfold these legs. So it's really pretty easy and then the legs unfold a second time. So let me show you here on this other side. Unfold, unfold again. Get out the firebox here. Now I'm just going to need the main stove, so I'll leave my other accessories in the bag. Go ahead and put my wood in it first. Okay, I'm gonna do a little Swedish fire torch in here because I want this to last a long time. I'm gonna get it started with some Easy Light Fire Starter. I'm just gonna break off a small chunk and then I'm gonna go ahead and drop it right down that center hole. It might kind of fall down in pieces a little bit here and there. Okay, I can see that there is fire going down there, so I'm sure that'll get going. You can see that Swedish fire torch is starting to run on its own steam. the bird. So I am going to go ahead and put that down in the pot. And then I'm just going to get some oil kind of down along the sides and on the chicken because I don't want it to stick on the sides so I'm just going to kind of do a quick little wash of oil there and then I'm just going to get a little bit of salt in here kind of get it to get on most of the skin surfaces of the chicken all right so we'll see how this goes I'll go ahead and lock this baby in there and it's in there for the duration now so now I'm gonna go ahead and put it on because it's not gonna hurt it to go ahead and start heating a little bit okay I can hear that chicken already starting to sizzle a little bit I mean I just barely put this on so I'm gonna start rotating it and the idea here is I'm just gonna rotate it till the sizzle stops 
rotate it a little bit more once the sizzle gets going good a little bit and just kind of keep it turning. I'm just going to rotate this a little bit more. Okay, you can hear we're cooking pretty good now. We'll go ahead and rotate it a little more. And I can smell that skin cooking too. Okay, I've started catching the juices here now. And what I'm hoping is that I'll be able to get enough good juices uh, that I'll be able to make some nice gravy from it. And uh, it smells like chicken, you know, it smells really good. I'm just really trying to pay attention to the smell that's coming out of here. Because as long as it just smells like chicken, I think I'm okay. But as soon as it starts smelling like burning chicken, then I have a little bit more of a problem. Okay, since this is my first time ever doing this, and I really have no idea what's going on in here, I'm just going to pull this off and let's just take a look at it. See what's going on in there. Well, it looks like it's just kind of a nice crispy skin there on the edges. So it does look like it's sticking to the sides, uh, which eventually may be a big problem. It may burn. But who knows? Maybe there's enough fat and moisture in there. Uh, to just fry it and hopefully it'll just fry dark and not necessarily burn on us. So far it's not burnt. We're about halfway through but it is looking a little bit dark. We'll get out the nano. Grab my nano sticks. Lower my fire grate. I hope I'm in frame here. I apologize if I'm not. Run my nano sticks through. I'm going to set it up with gas today for fun. Well, it still smells like chicken, just smells really good. I'm going to rotate these legs outward. This isn't a huge pot by any means, but I think it'll still rest on that with those in the outward position. And that chicken smells good. I really love working with the cycles of the fire like this. How it's really hot when it needs to be, when your food's raw and you're just getting started. But then it, it cools down to this nice simmering temperature right when your food is almost all the way cooked and you're just finishing it, you know, and you don't need it to be so hot. It's awesome. This is that same firewood that I put in in the very beginning. That uh, Swedish fire torch, you know, lasts about as long as what it'll take to to cook this chicken. So it's going to work out perfect. As 
So I've just got some Idahoan uh, garlic mashed potatoes that I'm going to go ahead and cook up. They should be good. Okay, we have a full boil here, so let's go ahead and mix these in. Those look really nice. We'll let those stand. I'm just going to set those back here. Let those stand for a second. So I'm going to go ahead and take the drippings. It's still dripping a little bit, but I'm hoping it'll just kind of drip through the table and not be too messy. Just go right down onto the ground. I'm going to go ahead and get my gravy going here. And I'll just keep rotating this chicken a little bit. This is going to get a little messy. I'm going to put a paper towel down there. So it won't go as far. I feel like I'm missing out on these great drippings. Okay, it's gravy starting to boil. Now what I've done is I've put a little bit of cornstarch in a baggie and then I've just kind of massaged it until all the lumps, the cornstarch lumps were out. So I'm just going to use this to thicken it up a little bit. And I should have been stirring that when I put that in. This might be lumpy gravy. Let's see how it goes. Oh, I think it's going to be okay. That actually looks really nice. And I think I should check my chicken here and see what's going on with it. Let's see what's going on inside our pot. Well, this part of it's not very brown, but I can see lots of brown stuff over there. Maybe even a little too dark. Let's get this other fork here. See if I can lift this bird up a little bit. It kind of fell kitty corner in there. So there are some dark chunks kind of stuck to the legs and stuff here and there but not too bad. Let me see if I can... Oh that side looks really nice. So let's go ahead and uh, stick a probe in this thing and see how warm it is. See if we need to cook it a little bit more. Let's see what that gets to here. Looks like we might need a little more time. We're at about 152. Let's see if we can't finish it up. It's almost there. Okay, you can see I've got a little bit of flame going there and uh, just to bring in the temperature back up. And I don't think it'll take a whole lot more and we'll have it. 
and uh, I'm just adding some salt and pepper to my gravy over here and flavoring it up a little bit. I should have brought another pan to catch these drippings uh, just to keep it from being such a mess. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and check this chicken one more time and let's just see if it's up to temperature. I'm thinking it will be because it was not very far off really. Hopefully I haven't gone too far. So I do like a nice moist chicken. Okay, we're at 160, 162, we're good. 165, yep, that's about perfect. Okay, I'm excited. So let's go ahead and get this bird out of here and see what it looks like. Oh, that actually looks pretty good. I mean, the tumbling did kind of tear up the, the drumsticks just a little bit but uh, not too bad really looks pretty darn good so I'm gonna go ahead and dish myself up a plate because my battery is almost dead and uh, I don't want to lose it so I'm gonna go ahead and get out my mashed potatoes which as those potatoes cooled down that lid vacuumed vacuumed itself closed I almost wasn't even able to get that off Okay, so here we have our mashed potatoes. I hope everything's in frame. And the mashed potatoes smell really good. You can really smell that garlic in them. It smells great. You go ahead and reach over here. And pour on some of my gravy. And then let's see if I can get some of this chicken to come off here for me. Let's go ahead and cut this. See what it looks like. Oh, it looks great. Let's see if I can get some of this out here. So I can show you a little cross section of this chicken. Let's see, where's the lens? Look at that. Very, very moist. Absolutely beautiful. Beautiful. I'm going to go ahead and pull off this leg because it looks really good. See if I can get it off. Chicken dinner. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Hey, if that was ever an appropriate thing to say, I think it's now. This looks great. A little bit of mashed potatoes. A little bit of chicken. Mmm. Wow. <laughs> that turned out really nice. I'm really happy with that. Well, I wanted to try it out here first before I did it for my family or did it for any friends or anything. And I'd say that works. That worked out great. The gravy's really good. The chicken's really good. The chicken's just amazingly moist. I can't even believe how good the chicken is. I mean, look at that. That's the breast, and it is just moist. And part of that is eating it right out of the oven like that, but part of it, and part of it's not overcooking it. Mmm. Wow, but that's good. But I think that's a pretty good system for cooking chicken because it really kind of contains all that moisture in such a small little area. A little bit of skin there, nice dark skin. Mm. Yeah, that's good.
It worked good. I'm amazed. <laughs> I was really worried it was just going to be a big mess, but hmm. I'm really happy with these results. Hey, thank you so much for watching. Please check out my website. You know, we offer all these items on our website. Uh, the Zebra lunchbox, the 16 centimeter loop handle pot, the firebox stove, uh, the folding table, the pot grabber, uh, the folding firebox nano. Um, lots of this stuff that I've used here today is available on fireboxstove.com. Thank you everyone for watching. Bon appetit. Okay, I decided to bring the chicken back to the office and share it with the guys. So I cooked this over the firebox just in the pot. Huh? Looks pretty good, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead and grab a plate and have some. Let me show you in here is the potatoes and gravy. And it should, it's still warm. It's not hot, but it's warm. So there's the gravy. And there's the potatoes. Alright, so I got my dish of food right here. Is it still I'm warm? Sorry. Yeah, it's warm. It's still pretty hot? The potatoes should be pretty hot. The gravy might not be as hot. Yeah, the potatoes are pretty warm. Uh, yeah, Turn I mean, up. to think like you can just cook something like this while on a camping trip, you know? Yeah, like, yeah, it's like a chicken dinner. Yeah. <laughs> and the chicken's pretty moist too, don't you think? Yeah, it's not dried out. I think it turned out great. So we got the, got the uh, zebra pot. Chicken. Chicken, roast, roasted chicken. That looks pretty good for not being hot and fresh. <laughs> it's still warm. It's still it's warm. It's not bad. Yeah. Heck, I eat cold chicken, you know, it's no big deal to me. Heck yeah. Man, that yeah. is nice and juicy and tender. That is awesome. It is moist though, huh? So you so, cook that on the on the on the firebox stove, I, horizontal baking yeah, with the zebra pot. With right? the zebra pot. Whole yeah. chicken. Whole chicken. <laughs> nice. And then I <laughs> used the uh, zebra lunch box to make the mashed potatoes and I used the extra pan in the lunch box to catch the drippings uh -huh. to make the gravy. Oh man. So scratch gravy. All, nice. <laughs> all out in the really sage. <laughs> out in the sagebrush. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Chicken dinner. And that's probably enough to serve, you know, four people at least. Four oh, yeah. four yeah. or five. You know, depending upon how much everybody gets. Yeah. So Yeah, not bad at all. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Pretty close nice. <laughs>